Welcome back to Caney Theater Group's Local Spotlight Series. Today, we are doing something very different from what we normally do. Today, 12 theater companies from around our area are coming together for a COVID-19 roundtable. I'm really excited about this. A lot of information is gonna be coming your way to let you know how we are trying to keep you safe for when we reopen. So let me introduce to you our companies. Hi, everybody. Hi. Hi. Thank you all so much for doing this today. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, you. We're gonna start with introductions. Um, so everyone at home knows who's speaking and where they're from. So we are gonna start with Green Room Productions. Hi everybody, my name is Erin Wallace and I am the executive and artistic director for Green Room. Strident Theater. Hi, uh, I'm Susanna Apgar. I'm uh, the artistic director of Strident Theater and uh, Kyle Boatwright who's here representing Reza Productions is the other half of our leadership team. Uh, Unity House Players. Hi, I'm Darcy Farber. I'm the uh, community outreach coordinator and I also serve as the artistic designer and sometimes director and tech person backstage and many hats. Uh, Rise Up Productions. Hi, I'm Kyle Boatwright. I am the co-founder of Rise Up and I'm also the in-house music director and uh, happy to be here. Thanks, Eddie, for having us. Thank you for coming. Um, Wilbraham United Players. Hi, I'm Deb Trimble. I'm the Artistic Director for Wilbraham United Players. It's nice to be here, Eddie. Theater Guild of Hamden. Hello, Eddie Zitka. I am Mark Giza. I am the Artistic Director of the Theater Guild of Hamden. It's nice to see you again. Hello. Ghostlight Theater. Hello, my name is Kevin Tracy and I sit on the Council of Ghostlight Theater. I am mostly in charge of making sure that batteries are fresh and in place and floors are swept. <laughs> <laughs> Exit 7 Players. Hi, I'm Chris Climo. I'm former president of Exit 7 Players and current board member. Southfield Players. Well, hello from south of the state border. Jerry <laughs> Zaleski, the facilities manager and tech director for the Southfield Players. Awesome. Silverthorn Theater. I'm Liz Syndicator. I am the co-founder and producing artistic director for Silverthorn in Greenfield. And that's it. <laughs> uh, Westfield Theater Group. Hey everyone, uh, I'm John Farrell. I'm the chairperson of Westfield Theater Group. Theater Group. Thank you, Eddie, for having us all tonight. Of course, thank you guys. Uh, and the Opera House Players. Hi, also from south of the border. I'm Joshua Prouser. I'm the president of the Opera House Players in Enfield. Uh, thanks for having us, Eddie. This is awesome. Of course. Well, we're going to jump right into this, and I'm really excited about it. The way we're doing it is we have three groups who are leaders for four different questions. Um, after those groups answer their questions, we will hold an open forum for anyone who would like to add to it. Uh, so the first question is, what are you doing to make sure auditions are safe and following CDC guidelines? And we're going to start with the green room productions. All right. Well, this was a hot topic last night because we actually had our board meeting last night where I was like, you guys, you got to help me think here. Um, so we uh, brainstormed a whole bunch of different things. We're not anywhere close to auditioning at this point. Um, but when, when, when we get back to it, we're going to be offering virtual for sure as a possibility for anybody who is not comfortable coming in um, at that point. Um, however, in-person auditions are always better. Um, so we're working really hard to put together a plan um, to make everybody feel safe and to make sure that the space is safe. So some of the ideas that we had um, was to have a um, volunteer that um, did door checks basically. Um, so before anybody even enters the space where everybody would be, um, they would get a temperature check. They'd fill out a survey um, saying, have you ever had COVID before? Have you been tested for it? Um, just voluntary information about themselves and how they're feeling um, so that if there's any reason wh why they shouldn't be there that day, we can ask them to come back on another day um, or, you know, come in virtually um, just to make sure that everybody is staying safe. The other things that we were talking about was um, 
obviously having hand sanitizer everywhere, making sure that everybody, regardless um, of you know where they've come from or or if they've had it before, everybody gets a squirt on their way in. Um, so that would be something that our at the door person would be doing, as well as having. Um, you know, clipboards and pens and, and all the paper and all of that be one time use. So they would be use it. They'd fill out the do all their paperwork um, at the door area. And then it would be put into like no, no touch boxes so that people aren't sharing pens and clipboards. Um, which either, I mean, the clipboards, we could have one-time use clipboards um, and then they're disinfected or have them have like some kind of sheath over the top of it that gets removed with each person. Um, of course, using masks is, you know, a biggie. Um, and then making sure that we have enough space in um, the designated waiting spaces so that everybody can be adequately spaced out um, as well as in the audition areas themselves. And we, you know, in the past few years, we've um, gotten away from, um, from smaller auditions and done more of group auditions and like improv activities and games and things like that. And I, I think we're probably gonna be moving towards again having smaller audition groups um so if we're auditioning for a certain character only having that character um people come in and audition at at one time and even then maybe spacing people out throughout the room so that nobody has to be next to each other initially um, and uh, music auditions would be, you know, solo with with just the casting group. That's usually what we do right now, anyway. But um, we would keep that. Um, and then we were just talking about disinfecting after each, you know, each small group comes in, doing a whole like room disinfectant of, you know, the surfaces. We had talked about there's some kind of like fogger that you can bring in and you can fog your space. I don't really know much about that. Yeah, but that's certainly like something that could be looked into um, for a quick a way of disinfecting in between groups. So, okay. and that's basically that. Those are the ideas that we've come up with so far. Um, I'm going to be taking notes through tonight, though, so yeah. I really look forward to seeing what you guys have come up with with your groups as well. So, I'd like to open the same question up to the Unity House players. We actually, uh, thank you, Eddie. We, we don't have any plans for auditioning and we don't have any dates for our season yet. A lot of our support structure um, comes from the organization who we fall under their umbrella in terms of funding and support. Um, and they are, as the Unitarian um, Universalist Society of Greater Springfield, they are going to be really looking to open the building and the space and their programming in person in a way that um, is welcoming and inclusive of all. And so they're gonna go above and beyond to really make sure that the guidelines of how that space is used um, meets the CDC regs and, and takes a few steps beyond. Uh, as, as a theater organization, we've really prided ourselves on the community building aspects, the right relationship aspects of what we do in our work, um, sort of on balancing with the idea of creating art together as well. Um, so I think that uh, what, whatever, when, when it is time to be live together, uh, one will wait until we have a, a really safe opportunity to do so. And um, then with, with their guidance and our own input, we'll be making some of those choices. We do already have some uh, safe practices in place from previous auditions. Um, our audition forms are online. Uh, we do do closed auditions and we have quite a lot of space to work with um, just in general for our rehearsals, for auditions and uh, for our, our performance spaces on, you know, on the smaller scale, but that works too. So yeah, we're um, we're on hold uh, in live in our live capacity. But one of the other things that that support structure is allowing us to do right now is um, we don't have to rush. 
we're, we're not counting on our, our performances and our season to keep our doors open. We have some support in doing that and we have some support with, uh, with that organization and making sure that we can stay connected. And if there are artists and people who are, who are feeling that distance right now that uh, we and that larger organization are, are in service to them virtually uh, here now. Fantastic. Um, all right, and we are going to go down to Strident. Strident, you're hey. up. Thank you. Um, uh, let's see. I think that um, as far as safety measures go, it's going to depend on what this looks like next year. And that's such a hard thing. To, it's impossible to predict. Um, and there are so many conflicting sort of big feelings and big opinions out there. Um, but we're, we're kind of moving through this thing without a whole lot of um, facts. You know, this is really unprecedented. So you know, like anybody and everybody else, I don't know what 2021 is even going to look like. Um, and so broad strokes, if it's still not safe, we, we won't have a season. Um, we're awfully young. This would have been just our second season. So, it, you know, it's going to depend on a lot of factors. It's sort of general landscape, but also we perform at Smith College. It's going to depend on what's happening with Smith College. It's going to depend on what the board um, thinks is best to do. It's going to depend on where we're at with the plays we have pending rights for. One play, uh, we have another play by a local writer we want to do. Um, but, you know, that's a lot of moving parts. Um, but the biggest moving part is, you know, what the hell is going to happen with this, with this pandemic, you know, this, you know, it's really, it's no joke, you know, we're, we're, we're having this discussion the day after um, Nick Cordero passed, you know, and that's, sorry, if I get a little sparkly, that's, it was a horrifying uh, trajectory for his, you know, his experience of this illness and his wife's experience of, of supporting him through that. So, you know, this is, we just don't know what 2021 is going to look like. Um, so it, for, you know, kind of my big handy uh, bumper sticker answer, it's sort of wait and see. Um, I don't have the specifics about like, you know, things like, you know, masks and gloves and all that. And of course, you know, if that's where we're at, great, let's take those measures. Um, but if, if this thing hasn't abated enough by then, um, I'm personally, you know, I'm not the decision maker, but, you know, speaking on behalf of the company and maybe just on behalf of me, you know, I'm, I'm, I tend much more toward, you know, let's be a hell of a lot safer than a hell of a lot sorrier. Um, and Darcy, I want to thank you for bringing up um, sort of other iterations of, of kind of ways to increase safety, because I think that once something you touched on for the community, we're not just in one unprecedented moment right now, we're in, we're in a couple of them, you know, as we see the, the Black Lives Matter movement and more movements connected to that for increased um, equity, increased justice, and certainly increased diversities. There are a ton of conversations happening around um, Sorry, my computer is telling me my internet connection is unstable, so I apologize if I freeze. But, you know, this is a big conversation in, in all communities, most definitely in the theater community right now. So um, not only are we looking at measures for, you know, increased safety around, you know, people's health, people's physical safety in the middle of, you know, this horrifying, unprecedented pandemic. We're in a global pandemic. It's just so weird. It, like, can't sink in. But uh, we also want to look at measures of safety when it comes to inclusiveness, like Darcy said, like making sure our company and our uh, landscape is safer for more people, is more welcoming and more inclusive. Uh, thank you again, Darcy, for bringing that up. And I just want to, I want to um, echo really sort of as loudly as I can that um, that increased uh, diversity, increased inclusion, increased justice doesn't just happen, you know? There have to be measures for that as well. So that that is, you know, we've got this kind of twinned focus moving forward. Wonderfully said. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you for having gonna, us again. <laughs> we're going to open up the question now to the entire floor. Anybody want to add anything? Yes, Opera House players. Um, to kind of piggybacking on what um, uh, Darcy uh, uh, said, you know she said that they're following the guidelines that their organization uh, 
tells them to do and taking it one step further. We're doing a similar thing. You know, we're, um, we're very connected with the town of Enfield. Um, we, our performances right now take place in a town of Enfield um, run building. So whatever the town tells us to do, we will at least follow that, but obviously go one step further. Um, we're very intertwined in that. Um, and then one thing um, Aaron brought up and kind of similar to that um, with you know, small groups uh, for auditioning purposes, uh, small groups of, of people, one thing we had talked about um, we would consider is, is time slots. So, you know, you have, let's say we have six people come in at this one slot, uh, six people come in at the next or whatever number of people. Um, it's different when it's, you know, if you have a show that's a small play of, you know, four characters compared to a, an ensemble show, a musical of 30 characters, it's not the same that you can do that with, but um, I think we would consider looking into time slots as a way to, to stagger people out. Anybody else? Perfect. Hi everyone. My name is Joshua Prouser. I'm the president of the Opera House Players, and we're really excited to have you guys back with us for our 2021 season. First up in February of 2021, Hunchback of Notre Dame the Musical. Then in May of 2021, here we go again, Mamma Mia the Musical. And then in summer of 2021, Little Mermaid the Musical, a youth player's production. We've missed you guys. We're really excited to get back with you in the theater and show you these great musicals. And we'll see you then. The Theater Guild of Hamden is proud to present Summer Theater in the Park. Join us August 21st, 22nd, and 23rd for Steel Magnolias, playing at Fountain Park, 883 Tinkham Road in Wilbraham, Massachusetts. Our next production will be coming March of 2021, and it's Jerry Herman's Hello, Dolly. For more information on either of these shows, please visit our website, theaterguildofhamden.org. to our house on Maple Avenue. See how we polish and we shine. We rearrange and realign. Everything is balanced and serene. Like chaos never happens if it's never seen. Every need we anticipate All right, we are moving on to question number two. What is your organization doing to make sure all rehearsals are safe? And we're gonna start with Rise Up Productions. Hello, Hello. I'm muted. <laughs> um, so, hi, so Rise Up's initial response to COVID overall was to immediately move as much as we could online. Um, we had a production that was supposed to go up on March 18th, and that was right in the thick of everything kind of becoming real and frightening and whatnot. And so we immediately leapt into the go online. Um, to that end, I think that most of what we will be doing, both in rehearsal and productions is going to be online for the foreseeable future. Um, we've had a lot of success with online live streams and online productions. Um, and the last production that we did was a short play and we had every rehearsal, every production meeting, every costume fitting on Zoom. And it was definitely wild uh, and definitely not ideal, but it sure beat feeling like we were being harmful um, to the environment. And so I think that's a big, big factor for us is how do we keep everybody as safe as possible, especially because so much of what Rise Up does has to do with singing. And as we all have kind of heard, singing in groups is a, is a big, scary... No-no. <laughs> Quasi-no-no situation, you know. Um, so as far as rehearsals, once we start getting back into the flow of things in, in real time, in person, um, we will be doing, first of all, a lot of disinfecting uh, up front. You know, I'm not, I'm going to walk into a room and I will wipe everything down with every Clorox wipe I own. <laughs> um, but 
we also have made a conscious decision to gear our upcoming shows to um, to be shows that won't suffer from distant rehearsals or any kind of uh, accommodations that we have to make in order to make make it safe for everybody. Um, so a lot of the rehearsals that we have will still be conducted on Zoom. Um, a lot of the musical stuff will be things like me creating a, a rehearsal track to send to performers and them doing a lot of work on their own. We've worked out a lot of ways to do voice lessons and coaching and, and rehearsing over Zoom. Um, once we get to in person, as much as we can possibly do it, it'll be outside for a long, long time. Um, it's, you know, it's impossible to know again when all of this is going to end, but we do know that there is a certain amount of safety outside um, that we can kind of count on. And so we're looking forward to having those moments of the in-person outside. We may be six feet apart, but we can at least see each other's faces. Um, there will be masks, there will be hand sanitizer, there will be all of the things that we constantly talk about um, as far as keeping one another safe. Uh, and, and it does help that one of my co-leaders of Rise Up is at Bay State spearheading um, a large campaign on COVID, COVID safety. Um, so between her and I, we've kind of honed these measures that are part of what Bay State has going on, but also part of what the artistic world has going on that we need in order to make this happen so that we're doing our shows justice and at the same time, keeping us all safe. Um, we're also looking at smaller productions so that when it is time to move indoors and do rehearsals indoors, um, we're trying not to have to have more than 10 people in a room at a time. And of course, I'm talking like December or whatever, whatever phase we are of opening up. Um, but we really want to make sure that there is the distance required. We will be disinfecting equipment, microphones, whatever it is. We are disinfecting, disinfecting, disinfecting. Everybody needs to let us know how they are feeling prior to rehearsal all the time. Um, and if people have shown any symptoms at all, we're going to ask them not to come to rehearsal and we will find a different alternative. Um, because again, it's art is beautiful and art is necessary and there is not art to be made if there are not humans there to take it in. Very true. And Very so true. that's about, that's where we stand with Rise Up's rehearsal process. Thank you, Rise Up. We're gonna move over to Wilbraham United Players. Hi, thanks. So I think the first thing that comes to mind for me is that we make sure that we think about the people first. So uh, I think we have to think about what's comfortable for our actors, for our staff. I myself as the artistic director of our upcoming production, the one we had to put on pause, I have to think for myself how comfortable I am as a high risk individual. And I'm not necessarily comfortable in starting right away. So I think our first reaction was to do that very thing, was to hit the pause button and say, wait, and then, take in the information from the folks on our board who are who are part of the healthcare organization and listen to them and consider, you know, no, we can't postpone to the summer, we can't postpone to the fall. Really, we have to consider when will rehearsal start and how does that give us the opportunity to do a good fleshed out production. And we, we opted to, to defer a production until this coming spring. So then if we do start rehearsals, what's that going to look like? We're pretty fortunate to have a very large rehearsal space um, where we could separate people during rehearsals or bring people in in smaller groups and give them plenty of space. But like Darcy, we serve a greater organization, the Wilbraham United Church, and I have to consider that that space is used for more than just our theater group. So what does that mean? What kind of impact does that have for the parishioners on Sunday morning? And if we're not even opening the building for church, 
I can't really open the building for rehearsal. So our, our whole process right now is to just say, don't have them. That's the safest thing to do. And then once we do have them, consider smaller groups for rehearsals. Make sure that you're, make, you're making the best use of the rehearsal space and the large size. Um, and I have one other consideration. In James and the Giant Peach, I have an ensemble that's currently cast of about 12 children, many of them uh, younger than eight years old or, you know, younger, than, they're not teenagers. And how easy is it going to be for them in a theater environment to keep them safe? I was, the only rehearsal we had as we started James and the Giant Peach was a gathering of the children to kind of go over theater craft and, you know, teaching them where stage left is and stage right is. And it was a very exuberant, physically active group. Um, that's going to be a challenge to manage in a, in a world where we need to keep people safe. So if that means that we defer our 2020 season to 2022, that might be what that means. It might mean that we have to cancel that production. Um, I have a consideration, not necessarily for rehearsals, but for casting. I have a 12 year old boy cast as James and the Giant Peach. And the first thing his mother said to me when I told her we were postponing was what if his voice changes? So <laughs> there's, yeah, there's all of those kinds of considerations to be taken into account. Um, but first and foremost, my consideration um, for my group is going to be what do the people need to be safe? And I have to take their feelings in, first of all. Perfect. So, Thank you. Thanks. And we're going to close out that with Theater Guild of Hamden. Well, as many of you know, um, with the production of Mamma Mia that I was doing, we did one weekend and then the pandemic hit and then we had to cancel. So we never finished the second weekend. So that ended up being disaster. Some people gave the donations. Some people got a voucher for the next show. Steel Magnolias is going up with us in August and we're doing it outside. There's a few places across the country that are doing like a Shakespeare in the Park. And I had cast it already and I really wanted to do it. So we've been rehearsing outside. I reblocked the show so no, everybody is six feet apart part no matter what happens in the play. Uh, it's working out quite well. We rehearse outside um, twice, twice every week and it's working out quite well. And in August we will see how the town of Wilbraham plays this out for us at Fountain Park. It'll be, we'll have people guiding people in and out. So they're sitting six feet apart and trying to do that. Um, with Hello Dolly, it's already all been cast and that's not opening to the last week of March because I did it with emails and people sending me things right through the internet, vocal auditions and so forth. So that's all done and hopefully, God willing, that's going to take off and everybody will be spaced apart. The way Tom Slowick and Dean and I talked about doing now with Hello Dolly is the small groups. Um, Dolly will go to Tom's house privately and get all her music done. Uh, we will block small scenes that are gonna be blocked six feet apart there's going to be no kissing in Dolly. There'll be, everything's going to be done a little different. I have some kind of neat ideas, uh, which I'm going to be doing with the show. And the other thing, like uh, a lot of the other directors said, is safety is just very important. A lot of our crowd now at the, um, the Red Barn and Wilbraham is an elderly crowd. And uh, it's almost theater in the round. And we only, the max we can get in there is 96 people. So it's going to be small. So when we do, hopefully do Dolly, we're cutting it down to 45. That's why we're doing eight or nine performances. So it'll be six feet apart with the seats and re-blocking of a lot of staging, not a big heavy stage in the middle, airy things coming in and out. And hopefully it's all gonna work, but I have to play with the town of Wilbraham too. They've been wonderful, but if things are gonna change for me um, with rehearsals, you know, we will start as with Magnolias, we're outside and then we'll be all spaced out for Dolly also. So that's kind of where we're at too. But I, I, it, it's so sad. I can't even watch the news every morning. Me being on TV, I, I, I can't even watch the news because it, it just everything has been such sad sadness. And I, I, that's why I wanted to do this outside production. And God willing, it'll work. It'll bring some fun back for people to go out and try to have a good time with the, with of course, with the social spacing. 
we're going to open this up now for an open forum. Um, I'm going to be the first one to throw something out there, though. Uh, as far as rehearsals go, you know, I think another thing that if if things are slowly starting to come back, say we have a vaccine, we still want to take all of these precautions. Uh, it's just something that we have to do um, out of respect for everyone involved with with uh, any performance. Um, the possibility, if it is a musical, uh, again, of course, trying to do outside and everything. But while we're rehearsing, if you're not rehearsing, you should be masked. And the minute you're done, you put that mask back on. You know, we all have seen the, uh, the pictures of what it looks like when someone is masked and coughs and when someone is not masked and cough. We also know that there is a 70% um, uh, rate where someone who is infected coughs in front of someone with a mask on. So it, the, it's transmissible in different ways, um, depending if you're wearing a mask or not. So that's something that I just wanted to throw out as far as rehearsals go, is that making sure people are masked whenever we can have them masked while still comfortably being able to rehearse but being completely safe. Um, does anyone want to throw anything out as far as rehearsals go? Uh, Aaron? So we are, we're halfway through currently <laughs> our rehearsal process with Rocky Horror Show. Um, and we were completely done with act one. We were heading into act two and then a pandemic hit. So um, anyway, we are further postponing our rehearsals and our show until 2021 now, which will be news to our cast. Well, hopefully not by the time this comes out. Um, and um, what we are planning on doing is um, having smaller groups for our rehearsals, um, which we have we were ha like pulling everybody in and then splitting everybody up into smaller groups once there. And I think we're just going to have smaller groups come in and work separately instead of pulling everybody. Um, and then also we had our music director because we were anticipating getting back to it sooner um, and we didn't want it to get stale with the, with the cast. So we had the music director record all the different parts for all the music. Um, and so all of those are recorded on practice files for, for the cast so that they can learn their stuff, hopefully ahead of time. Um, and right, John? <laughs> and, uh, and come in ready so that we don't have to spend as much time um, doing that kind of thing that they can do at home anyway with their files, hopefully. Um, so we're hoping that we can cut down on that kind of thing and they can come in prepared to do the stuff that we can only do in rehearsal. Um, and then, you know, the other precautions that we already talked about with auditions, we would still be doing during rehearsal. Thank you. And Jerry, yes. Uh, looking at rehearsals and even towards performances, there are currently two major bits of research being done at University of Colorado, University of Maryland, where they are looking at the specific emissions from actors, musicians, projecting, singing, playing, what is the droplet movement? What is the potential contamination range? Uh, according to some of the folks from MTI TRW where, who shared this information, uh, we're looking probably another month, month and a half before we would see the preliminary results of this research. So we will all be adjusting somewhat on the basis of whether in rehearsal we need to wear masks all the time in rehearsal, or for singing or so, we can do it, but what distancing we would actually need. Uh, just with the basic data that's available now, the six feet is out the window. Mm -hmm. But we, we need hard numbers and they don't exist at this point. So that is being generated. We're just gonna have to stay alert and adjust accordingly. Thank you. Uh, yes, Josh. Uh, just kind of, Piggybacking a little bit on what you said, Eddie. Um, well, you know, one of the things that, you know, the pandemic is an awful thing, but um, any opportunity to, 
something good can come from it or something we can learn from it. Hopefully going forward, uh, you, you know, theater or rehearsals or, or uh, performing arts, we all get sick a lot. You know, when you get to a show, when you get to tech week or you get to performances, there's usually someone sick. Um, we're just wearing ourselves out by, and that helps us get sick. But hopefully by doing this, we can um, put in some new best practices in our normal rehearsal processes that will cut down on that. You know, being like from now on, whether there's a pandemic or not, we sanitize more. We, we um, are cleaner, you know, do things like that to moving forward two years, five years, 10 years from now, um, there's less sickness in our theaters, hopefully. All right. Hi folks, I'm Susanna Apgar. I'm the founder and artistic director of Strident Theatre. Uh, we're a feminist company based in Northampton, Massachusetts. Uh, our mission um, is to center the voices of diverse women plus and uh, LGBTQIA plus folks um, in our practices both on and off the stage. Uh, we had an amazing first year in 2019. Uh, we were welcomed beautifully by this community and uh, we couldn't be more grateful. Um, we had a great season planned for 2020, but the entire globe um, is on pause. So everybody stay safe, um, stay tuned because we are gonna thaw out that season for 2021. We've got one uh, play, we have rights pending for a published play and we're going to produce another play by a wonderful local woman playwright. So please keep an eye on us and we will be back as soon as we can. Stay safe. We want to see you on the other side of this thing. Thank you. Located in the heart of Greenfield's cultural district, Silverthorne Theater Company offers high quality performances that challenge actors and audiences with thought provoking plays in an intimate setting. This fall, we offer a variety of online productions, including our short and sweet festival of 16 tiny new plays airing in mid-September. In November, we bring back our world premiere production of The Tattooed Man Tells All by Peter Wartzman. Featuring Keith Langsdale, this gripping virtuoso piece bears the complex history of a concentration camp survivor. Our 2021 season will feature Charles Ludlum's definitive spoof of gothic melodrama, The Mystery of Irma Vep. Admissions, Joshua Harmon's honest look at white privilege in the academic world, and She Stoops to Conquer. Oliver Goldsmith's classic comedy send-up of 18th century manners. Go to silverthorntheater.org for full details. All right, we are going to move on to question number three. What is your company doing to keep audiences and house staff safe before, during, and after performances? We're going to start with Ghostlight Theater. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Eddie, and thank you, esteemed guests as well, for being part of this panel. Um, one of the benefits of Ghostlight Theater is its diminutive size. It makes us relatively nimble overall. And part of our recent history with COVID is that we had our big musical, Fun Home, pretty much rehearsed, and we were about to move into the technical areas before the hammer fell. And essentially, we've decided, just like everybody else, to move everything to 2021 uh, because the way to protect your audiences is, is to wait until it is safe overall. Um, I can personally speak as a, I'm, my day job is a professional paramedic and firefighter. And two days into the shutdown, I was locked away in a hotel room for two weeks because of an unprotected exposure. Um, 
And so this is the way you keep people safe is to keep them apart until we have uh, a reasonable vaccine or cure. And to that point, we won't have an audience until Gateway City Arts, our venue opens. Uh, they have made the decision that they are shutting down all operations, not until the government opens up uh, businesses, but um, they're not opening until there is a cure, a vaccine, or a good treatment plan for those who are ill. And um, we're in full agreement. They certainly didn't force our hand. Um, and once we have moved on into um, having shows again and having audiences, much like Deb, we have a, a multi-generational cast that we will have to make some decisions about casting again. And with the audiences, we're going to follow the CDC guidelines just like everybody else is and should. Our venue is a pretty tight space. Those of you that in the room, it can uncomfortably hold 100 people. And so that um, the kind of physical distance required can will, will be challenging for us. And working with Gateway, we will have a, um, a very strong plan to make sure that everything is clean before and after rehearsals, uh, trying to maintain distances between actors and audience. And that's pretty much all that um, one can do at this point if you're going to have a physical space with people watching and people performing. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, exit seven players. Ah, thanks so much for having us, Eddie. Um, so with Exit 7 Theater, we're really reliant on uh, shared space with the uh, Ludlow Senior Center. Um, and so we are kind of at a little bit of a standstill on what is allowed to be opened and what's not allowed to be opened. Um, so in, in regards to our patrons, um, the first thing we kind of did was install hand sanitizing stations uh, throughout the theater and in our lobby areas and even backstage for our cast. Um, but we also are planning on probably um, socially distancing our cast member, or, sorry, our patrons, and um, probably doing a call, uh, call in box office type of deal where we assign seating rather than letting people just uh, select their own seats so that we can maintain that socially distanced um, criteria there. Um, again, we're trying to follow as many of the guidelines as we can. And we've pushed everything off until 2021, which a lot of groups are doing. Um, we've talked about several things, but everything, as we know, is kind of up in the air, but face masks for patrons and volunteers working, as well as crew members, and even, dare I say, cast members as they enter off stage from coming off uh, on stage, I mean. Um, temperature checks possibly and just a quick wellness uh, questionnaire as they enter. We talked about staggered um, entrancing uh, when they come for a show, um, when we get to that point, of course. Um, uh, we talked about even looking at our HVAC systems with uh, air filtration. Um, I think Aaron touched upon electric static uh, sprayers to clean our seats. Um, Obviously, we'd have a cleaning regiment, really strict cleaning regiment before and after every performance and rehearsals too. Um, we even talked about um, even our concessions. Like there's so many things to think about, but like concessions, like prepackaged foods for sure, probably no baked goods because we just can't maintain quality there. Um, and even like pre-ordering foods before the show starts and then they go and they pick it up or someone even delivers it right to their seat um, kind of idea. Um, the bathroom situation, obviously the, the criteria for cleaning the bathroom is gonna be crazy. Um, but in our space, for those of you who have been there, we have downstairs uh, senior center space as well as one uh, unisex bathroom upstairs. Um, so we're talking about every other stall in the downstairs bathroom. So really max two occupants at any given time and then one occupant for our upstairs bathroom, uh, even though there might be more than one, more than that for stall purposes. Um, um, I'm trying to go through my notes here. Uh, we also talked about, um, you know, 
programs, maybe make an electronic copy available so there's not shared programs. Um, or having the paper program, but then obviously a lot of us depend on recycling them, but there's no way to really clean those after the fact. So basically a single use program, but then making a, an online one available somehow uh, was kind of an idea I tossed out there. Um, and just not having that congregation of uh, before shows congregation as much. So the staggered opening I talked about earlier, but also just quicker opening of the house, which I know the, the cast and crew may not like, but we don't want people just uh, hanging out in our lobby as much, get them in their seats, make them stay there. And um, those are some of the things that we've talked about. Perfect, thank you. Uh, Suffield players. Well, greetings. And again, Eddie, thank you so much. This is actually turning out to be really fun. Uh, one of the things I've realized and the players have that we are facing with the audience, it's the most difficult aspect of maintaining a safe environment because not all of the individuals coming to our show are as invested in keeping everybody safe as we are. We are going to face some resistance, it's inevitable. Uh, face coverings, the appropriate, socially appropriate term instead of masks, uh, really have to be non-negotiable for the audience and any house staff. It, it's just a continuous thing, uh, and that's covering mouth and nose. And yes, we're going to need our staff, more of them, and have them trained at a higher level so they can manage these situations. There's no question that it starts even with the parking, people coming in, that somebody has to be outside monitoring to be sure that there's appropriate spacing in those environments. Uh, our parking lot is small. We can barely fit, a, we, well, no, we can't fit a full house. Um, but even in reduced attendance, we want to be sure that there's an appropriate level there. Uh, our foyer is three feet by six feet. So metered admissions, people coming in, not backing up on the stairs, not backing up in proximity in the foyer, and actually getting them, in, them into the seats, because our center aisle is only five feet wide. Uh, meter, metered admissions, metered seating, and unfortunately, metered exiting. It's like loading an airplane. You load them from the front of the front of the theater to the back, and you unload them from the back to the front going out. Uh, it, it's just what we have to do. Seating, we've taken a very firm look at if we can open. Connecticut is in not yet even into phase three. The descriptions for performance spaces have not even been written as of this presentation. So we are, we are planning if we can open at some point, Socially distant seating would reduce our 104 to somewhere between six feet, well, with six feet spacing, between 16 and 48 people in our theater. The key comes in on how they identify as whether they accept that they are a family grouping, can be seated together or not, at which point they must be distanced. And a full house of 16 people is a terrifying thought. <laughs> but it's what's there. Uh, I also heard mention, and thank you, on the concessions. Everything I've heard says concessions can no longer be displayed in front of the public. Uh, it would be options presented, ordered, and they can either receive a package or even better, as was mentioned, delivered to the seats. Uh, I think the audience is the most complicated we're going to face. And if we can manage that, audience, our casts, our rehearsals, everything else will fall into place. Thank you. Uh, we're gonna open this up to everybody. I did wanna say one thing before I did open it up. Uh, two things that I have come across. Uh, Seacoast Repertory Theater up in Portsmouth, New Hampshire is opening to 30% capacity. And they're actually selling tickets in blocks. So there are uh, a block of four, two, three, and so on. Um, if someone buys, three people buy a block of four, they cannot sell that fourth seat. 
So they're actually selling them in blocks, socially distant. So uh, that's one thing. And the other thing that I was thinking about as far as concessions go, and this is something I thought about, and it takes me to Broadway, uh, when you buy that $30 glass of wine, <laughs> they actually have, and I don't know the expenses on this, but they have the small plastic uh, sippy cups with the topper and the little thing that they can open and close them. Um, this would allow the people to have their own cup. They would take that home. Um, so it wouldn't be as, uh, as much of a problem as an open glass. Um, so that's just something that I was thinking about today, actually, while I was driving. So, uh, so I'd like to open it up. Deb? Um, yeah, I want to pick up on something. First of all, Eddie, with the sippy cups, I think we have a large enough collection here at home that we could furnish <laughs> a whole performance. Um, my daughter gets a cup every show she sees. Um, but secondly, to talk about a point that Christina made about online programs, um, we actually attended a, perform a production of The Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime at Connecticut Repertory Theater, and they had no paper programs. They had gone totally online. So there is a way to do it. <laughs> so just I'll, I'll dig that information up and see if I can't pass that on to you. Great. Erin? As you were talking, Deb, I just had this idea. The, um, you could have your entire program on a uh, projector that's projected during intermission and um, before the show and after the show so that it slides through each page of your you know, would-be playbill. And, and then it could also be emailed out to, to the patrons who purchase tickets. My question um, is this, because we have been just personally with my family and friends, there's, we've been having a lot of um, arguments about mask wearing in public spaces. And like, what do you do about people who just come to your show and refuse to wear their mask or take it off during, you know, the lights go down and the mask comes off. How do you deal with a problem like that without wrecking the show? Oh, they just leave. You, you, you just have to have them go. That's it. You, you know, you paid your admission. You're not following the rules. I'm sorry. I mean, I run a business. I run a flower shop and people, there's a note on my door. When you come in to order wedding flowers or funeral flowers, masks. I had a lady come in last week who wouldn't wear a mask. I, I couldn't wait on her. I, she was eggs her out the door. It's something that's going to have to be, I mean, I'm a nervous person anyways, with all this going on, you're going to have to look out for your audience and your actors. And I, I think that that's what I would do. You know, I, I think maybe be a little extreme and all the other people feel, but I would reinforce and ask that person to leave. Uh, Susanna? I'm with uh, Mark on this one. Again, uh, considering my background, uh, uh, I think my uh, my position on this is um, set in stone that if you refuse to wear the mask, uh, let me introduce you to the door. Right. And that's it. The, yeah. the, um, the, it's, it's a no-brainer. Yeah. It's Susanna. like using your cell phone in the theater. Absolutely. Susanna? You know, if you no. uh, I was, um, was going to uh, echo some of this and, and sort of, um, I don't know, highlight that, that this sort of brings into sharp focus that what we do, it, we're, in the, we're in the business of, of, of dealing with people. You know, when we put together a show, when we have a show and have an audience under normal circumstances. And so for shows that are gonna open this year or next year with, with masks and, and distancing and everything, that's gonna be, that's gonna be something that people are gonna have to prepare for is exactly that factor. I work with the public as well. Um, Mark and 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 it's not you know so far it's been relatively easy to you know I work in Northampton and so there isn't a huge right. huge component of folks who want to insist that this is a hoax or or insist that this isn't this is some glorified flu or something like that um, but that said I'm still telling people that they need to put on their mask and that they need to keep it on and when I can't hear them that the solution is not to pull down their mask and speak, that just, they just speak louder, you know? Right, right. You know, it, you know that's sort of a cute example, but, but, you know, talking about like having to enforce this with audiences, I think that that's something that, you know, folks are really gonna have to consider and really prepare for because I'm not a bouncer, you know? And, and the folks that we had uh, working 
at our um, at our box office and, and, and volunteering at the door, you know, as ushers and all that, they're not bouncers, you know, we don't have training for this. And so that's, to me, that's, my gosh, that's kind of this, this whole different sort of hydra of considerations is, is enforcing the mask policy. And like, and like um, Aaron said, how do you do that without ruining the show? Right. You know? Very true. So I don't have an answer. I just sort of have <laughs> right. concern. Smart, smart. Kyle? <laughs> Yeah, I think um, I think this is the biggest. I think it was it wasn't Mark or, or Jerry. You're both in the same corner of my screen. Um, one of you, perhaps both of you, said that this is the biggest struggle. Right? This is the biggest hurdle to see what the audience is gonna do um, because we can control who we bring into our our rehearsal space. We can control who we want to work with on the stage and in the room. Um, but I do think that something that we have going for us is that we have this order from Charlie Baker saying that we all need to be wearing masks when we enter public establishments. Um, and I think, you know, one of the scariest things about COVID when it comes to our, our profession is that in order for us to do our jobs, we are asking everybody to come together in close proximity. Um, and that's, there's a lot of uh, diciness within that, right? Um, but I was thinking about, I, I saw a picture of a, a theater in Germany that had removed almost all of the seats and they left like two here and two there and two here and two there. And gosh, if that's the way to do it, then that is the way to do it. Um, masks, yes, absolutely, but masks or no, suppose that order disappears and we can't enforce things the way we would like to. You know, social distancing is still really, really, really crucial. Um, and I think, the the disinfecting notion and the asking things of our audiences ahead of time is something that is there's great potential for that to say here is your ticket when you come you be prepared you have your mask and have your hand sanitizer and do all the things that are necessary to do and i also want to piggyback on aaron what you'd said about having um the program projected as something, you know, getting rid of a tangible thing that where we can hand things out. Um, something that was really wonderful for us when we Rise Up did a production on Zoom a couple weeks ago is that we did a slideshow program and it played at the top of the show and it played at the end of the show and everybody got all the information that they needed without touching anything. <laughs> um, so I think there are definitely ways. I think it's just Absolutely. a matter of priming our audiences to play the, by the rules. And mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's not just the common courtesy. It, it's like the common courtesy of turning off your cell phone, right? Have common courtesy for the company that you are coming to support. Hi. My name is Deb Trimble, and I'm the artistic director for the Wilbraham United Players, a community theater group that's been in existence for more than 60 years. I'm sitting here on the empty stage in Fellowship Hall at the Wilbraham United Church, our usual performance space, and I'm missing theater just like everybody else. And next spring, we look forward to bringing you James and the Giant Peach, it was originally intended to be performed this June, but of course, like everybody else, we had to postpone our season, and we intend to still bring it to you. We're fully cast, we're ready to start rehearsing, and the dates will be announced. You can find that information on our website, www.wilbrahamunitedplayers.org, or on our Facebook page. We look forward to seeing you doing live theater in 2021.
right, and we are coming on to our last question. What is your company going to do to keep creatives, actors, crew, and musicians safe backstage? And we are going to start with Silverthorne Theater. <laughs> Thank you, Eddie. This is such a tricky one for us. We essentially create our theater space and stage every time we perform because it's in a great big uh, old room on the top of Hawks and Reed Performing Arts Center in the middle of downtown Greenfield. So essentially we can make spaces that, uh, and act, actually we do have more flexibility than somebody who's only got a small room with a door on it. So essentially we talked about this and we've thought about, first of all, having extra hanging space for costumes, making sure that you can distance the costumes as well as the people. Because if you think about that, that's uh, one way of spreading uh, whatever might be around. Secondly, making sure that every person had their own assigned space backstage. In other words, usually people are milling about, um, but people, when they are off, off stage, they would need to go, um, stay within their own space and not sharing any of the implements or uh, water bottles or Kleenex boxes, all the different things that people have backstage. With laundry, making sure that you have laundry going out in, in bags. Each, each uh, actor would have their own bag for laundry that would go out. Keeping um, things like that apart and lots of hand sanitizer and a lot of good stuff. We only have one bathroom on the, the uh, floor that we perform. It has to be uh, used also by anybody who's handicapped because it's the only one we have. So we would have to make sure that one of our um, house staff was responsible for making sure that the, it was cleaned up in between times. This is what the actors have to use. We have nothing else for them to use. We have tricky, it gets a little tricky because of course we hire equity actors as well from time to time. And fortunately, um, most of the time it's not really an issue because our equity actors are pretty flexible. <laughs> so, and I would be interested to see what equity is requiring in terms of the, the kinds of sanitation, that sort of thing, and it, what their requirements will be. We don't anticipate starting again our season show until actually a year from October. So, but we're, and we'd be starting with a two person show, but it's the mystery of Irma Bep, which is a, a very, it's a fast paced, very quick changes, that sort of thing, but it's only two actors. So that's a help by starting off. We are thinking about doing a cabaret show though uh, in, uh, in the springtime next year, which would be uh, seating the audiences at tables. We would have a larger group, but again, backstage, we would spread people out just as far as possible. And Kyle knows what the situations are back there. <laughs> but um, so lots of uh, being very conscious of that. Also not allowing anybody but the cast back there, mm -hmm. the cast and the stage manager, probably not even the director. I mean, I think keeping as, as few people that enter that space as possible, because once you've got it cleaned up and um, you know, sanitary and uh, sorted out, you don't want people back there. Possibly a dresser might have to be back there in, in some cases for some of the shows, but pretty much that would be the only people. Um, not allowing any gift being brought backstage. So in other words, not having uh, people sending flowers in, sending little gifties to the uh, actors, pretty much keeping it in as an isolation space. Um, and who knows what it's going to be like by the time, you know, a year from October, we, we may have a very different situation, but uh, essentially that's all we could come up with. Um, and uh, any other suggestions that people have be very welcome. Well, we're about to hear from Westfield Theater Group. Maybe they'll have some uh, some new oh. stuff for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Eddie, and thank you, everyone that's here tonight. Um, it makes me so happy to hear everybody being so on board together with everything and that we're all going to be supporting each other to get through this incredibly tough time um, for all that's involved. Um, like Rise Up, we were about to, we were just about to go up with our spring production in which we moved that until until it's going to be safe to do so, until uh, Governor Baker gives us that okay. And as our uh, board has, we actually had our meeting last night, we said that 
we're not going to do anything uh, live like that until we're, we're good to get to do so. Um, luckily, we're able to do a little bit of stuff on the side in terms of safety. Until then, we're actually, we've actually, not re in related to the COVID, but we are finally adding in some uh, handicap elevator to be able to get any handicap patrons or um, cast members up and down the two levels of our building and up onto the stage. Um, but then in regards to backstage, we are gonna make sure that everybody's bringing in their own makeup. Nobody is sharing any of that stuff. That people have their own set marked off uh, space to be able to have their own dressing area, their own props waiting for them. We're gonna make sure that all props are cleaned off in between shows. Um, even if it's between a matinee and an evening show in which there's a, lot, a, a tight window, we're still gonna make sure that everything is clean and, and safe to use. Because, um, and luckily the cast has been welcoming of all of, and of us waiting because they wanna make sure that they are safe as well. Wonderful, thank you. And we are going to go to the Opera House Players. Thanks, Eddie, and thanks for having all of this. This has been a really um, informative uh, discussion, and I'm glad I could be a part of it. Um, you know, one of the things um, Opera House has that's we're kind of lucky, um, as of right now, we're still performing in the Enfield Annex, which is a, the former Fermi High School, which is a very large building. Um, so there's lots of room. So um, we're going to be employing a lot of social distancing. Um, we have different rooms that we can set up um, different green rooms so people can be even spread out um, the small groups while social uh, while um, you know changing or getting ready for the show um, you know nothing's off the table We're, we'll have discussions with our um, our production team for when we do get back in there in 2021 whether that means you know um, making entrances not not one way wings but you know making this wing is for exiting, this wing's for coming on, if, that, if that's possible. Um, masks on if you're not um, on stage, if you're backstage, if you're in the green room, um, we, that would be enforced. Um, no conjugating with, um, with audience members after the show. We know everyone loves to see their, their family and their friends, you know, maybe outside or in small groups, but we, we can't have the large groups of, of actors with, um, with audience members. Um, you know, no sharing water bottles, obviously. We probably wouldn't, uh, we'd encourage actors to, uh, and crew to bring their own water, um, sanitizing props when they come off stage. Um, really anything we can do to, to, to keep our actors safe. Um, you know, can't have a show without actors. You can't have a show without an audience. You can't have a show without a crew, without musicians, if you're doing a musical. Um, no one is, Everyone is just as important, and it's important to keep everyone as safe as the next person. Um, so, it, you know, we're, you know, like I said, nothing's off the table. We're not going to get into doing shows until um, we feel it's comfortable. You know, we have a season planned out for, for 2021, um, but we're, we're reserving the right to change that at any time as this continues to evolve. Uh, evolve. Um, so it, it's, you know, other, there's, there's so many different things we could try to do, you know, on stage when you're moving set pieces, you know, don't move set pieces. No one moves set pieces together. You just keep keep the set where it is, use a unit set. Um, you know, one person mans the curtain if there's a curtain. There's so many different things um, that are, that is out there that we can do to minimize uh, contact by people and, and, you know, certain people touching only certain things. Um, but we're, you know, safety is our number one thing. We, we don't want anyone to get sick on our watch. We don't want anyone um, coming in if they're sick. So um, we're trying to be very careful and, and very conscious of the situation. Nice. I'm going to open this up one more time. Uh, one thing I'm going to say really quickly is aerosols. Uh, there'll be definitely no perfumes, no hairsprays, things like that in the back. Um, it's, it's just, again, it's just something else that can go into your lungs. And as singers, it's, it's bad for us anyway. As, as speakers, it's bad for us. Um, so eliminating any sort of aerosol is, is definitely going to be a plus. Um, does anyone have anything they'd like to add to this? Darcy? Sure. Um, thank you. And, and I'm hearing such creativity amongst this group, which is, I think, the key 
to this situation, creativity and flexibility to, to take what uh, what you have that you can use in your space, whether that be, you know, you get to create your own theater in a big empty space or you can take your production outside. I think that's really, um, I think that's the key to how we're going to get through this in addition to just the, the standard precautions. Um, I think that uh, that's certainly an angle that we're looking at as we look forward to, to moving um, into live performances. Uh, we're considering one of the assets that we have to work with is a huge amount of land and space around our theater building. So what, what can we take out of the building? What can we do something differently with? Um, and in terms of our backstage stuff, that opens up options too, you know, rather than inside dressing rooms, do we have curtained outside dressing rooms? Can we have, you know, a small tent somewhere for, you know, each different group of people? Um, and I think that that, the, the, the creativity and flexibility ties into what we choose for our seasons. I think some seasons are, are already chosen, but I know for us in particular, uh, we've retained uh, the rights to You're in Town, which we were gonna do this summer with youth. We're hoping to do that um, in 2021 as part of us celebrating our 10th anniversary. And when you get a production that's set in a sort of dystopian nondescript time period, there's all sorts of options for where you're putting your pit and your players and your actors and the audience. Um, and so I think looking for those opportunities to take resources that we have and, and rethink how we use them um, has something exciting that, that can challenge us uh, in, in the midst of trying to deal with all the baggage of what we're carrying that's happening around us. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes, Susanna. So I just want to, um, uh, something that Josh said uh, really kind of resonated with me is that um, all the decisions that we're making and the ways we're moving forward, this is happening as he put it on our watch, you know? And for me, the bottom line is, you know, I agree with, with Kevin uh, and Ghost Light Theater. I just, I think there's gonna be a lot of ways to be creative and a lot of ways to be flexible the way that Darcy said. I, I really, um, I echo that. But but for me, the bottom line at the end of the day is I, I, I just won't put anybody at risk. Safety I'd, rather, I'd rather not do a show. I'd rather my company fold than somebody get sick, you know, right. mm -hmm. and somebody lose their life, you know? So um, for me, you know, it's, <laughs> It's sort of an extreme answer and a simple answer, and I might be kind of repeating what I said before, but you know, when it comes down to it, I just, I won't put anybody at risk. I just won't, if we can't keep it online or keep it, you know, I love the idea of going outdoors or something like that, but if this, if this damn thing is still happening in 2021, I'm, for my company, I just don't think I'm gonna hold a, a show indoors, you know? It's, it's, it's too freaky. Anybody else? Christina? Um, I was just gonna say that um, at Exit 7 Theater, we were also talking about um, for safety of our cast, um, actually extending our changing area into our downstairs area, um, the back end of the cafeteria that we use for concessions usually, um, cause that's already quartered off and maybe even making that the dressing area, but using backstage is just standing area only uh, waiting for entrances. Um, and we also talked about um, our pit band, which is kind of weird because it's called a pit band, but our pit band is actually in the balcony at exit seven. And uh, we talked about sliding our lighting board operator over to balcony right, and then spreading the pit out uh, in our balcony with possibly using like plexiglass or some sort of separation. So they, own, they have their own little cubby, which I know will affect um, sound and that sort of thing but it's just things we're looking into um yes obviously safety number one won't do anything until we can do it perfect and mark you'll be our last person for the okay. day now i just have a quick i'm throwing this out to the whole group is anybody concerned uh about ticket sales about people really coming back i mean i, I you know a lot of older people come to my shows um i know we have you know friends or loved ones that are in performances, they all come to support them. And it's, you know, Broadway's not opening till January now, but we open it up to everybody. And 
you know, great, we're doing this fabulous show and we're in rehearsal. Are we, of course, we're going to be concerned. I'm wondering, even the smaller groups, my group's a small group. I know Broadbrook Opera House has been around forever and they have a huge venue to, is, are people concerned about tickets? Getting people back into the theater, coming to see the shows. Aaron? Yeah, I, I think that now is a great time to put the pressure on the publishing companies to allow us to be able to do private like Zooms or virtual shows um, that people can purchase tickets for and get a separate access to the show if they're not comfortable coming to the actual theater. And I think that, that like for them, that should be a big thing that they have to overhaul because they're they're hurting just as much as us. They need us to succeed in order for them to succeed. Right. right. So some some companies are doing that, Aaron. I don't know if you you're aware. Um, I think MTI is is allowing special special licenses for things like that. And I'm not sure if any of the other Concord houses are doing it, but they are they are attempting to do titles that. Titles are limited. The titles are definitely yeah. limited. Hey everyone, this is John from Westfield Theater Group. Uh, we can't wait to see everyone when it's safe to see everyone back in the theaters. Uh, our upcoming season has a bit of question marks. As of right now, what we have planned is our, what would have been our spring 2020 show of She Loves Me is going to go up the first two weekends of December. Stay tuned though to see if we have any other small fun little things going on uh, until then. Hope everyone stays safe and sane. Peace out. Lift every voice and sing to earth and heaven ring. Ring with the harmonies of liberty. We are the leaders of Rise Up Productions that produces shows to help support human rights organizations. As we aim to rise up out of COVID, we also aim to rise a little higher and help shift the face of performing arts nationwide. Please join us. Facing the rising sun Thank you all so, so much for joining me on the Local Spotlight series and, and taking time out of your busy schedules uh, for doing this. I hope it was inform as informative for you as it was for me. Um, I definitely got some wonderful ideas from each and every one of you about how to go forward um, in a COVID-19 world, uh, even after a vaccine. Um, I'm really thankful that we have this community of people who are so generous with their thoughts and generous with their information and are willing to share what they've come up with as a company with everyone. Because if there's one thing that we are as a group is it's we're a community. We are a theater community. We are passionate. We are just creative 
we are we love art and we love sharing that with people and i am just i want to thank you all from the bottom of my heart for getting all of you here to do this um because it's it, it just it, i hope it shows everyone at home that we're all together on this we're all in this together so thank you guys so much thanks eddie thank, thank you have a great night thank you. Have a pleasure. Great night, everybody thank you so much Bye. sippy cups of wine for everyone yeah <laughs> pretty much the answer to this whole thing <laughs> good night everybody good night. good night thank you it was a lot of fun what a wonderful group of people what a community we have here i'm so happy that you all joined us tonight to get an inside look as to what these local groups are are doing in order to keep you and everyone involved safe upon reopening whether it's 2020 2021 or 2022 know that we're here we're we're working for you we're creating so remember this is only intermission and we're excited for your return and to bring you back into the theater we miss you and look forward to shining the spotlight on our stages again